hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm showing you the mid-side recording technique. I'll show you how to set up the microphones, how to do all the processing in the DAW, and also why you might want to use this technique to get more stereo width out of your recordings. So let's jump right in. This technique is a lot more simple than it might seem, but there are a few important steps to consider and we'll just start with the recording process. So you need two different microphones. You can use a combination of different types of microphones, but one of them has to be able to be directional, so like a cardioid pattern looking in one direction, and the other microphone needs to be able to record in a figure eight polar pattern. We'll get into this in just a moment. So these will be the mid and the side channels. The mid microphone, just point it directly at your instrument. You could record a variety of different instruments with this. Straight at the instrument, if possible, try to be sort of perpendicular to the instrument, 90 degrees. And then for the side recording channel, we're gonna to try to get this microphone as close as possible to that mid microphone without touching. And just turn it so that the figure eight is picking up the sides of the instrument and the room. But the really important thing is that although this figure eight is picking up both sides, it's not picking up a left and a right channel. If there's noise on the left or the right, it's all sort of summed to mono and we get a single mono recording. So the next step is to record the performance and you'll end up with two tracks in your DAW. So let's just jump right into that. This is my favorite part of the process. We're gonna take that mono signal and create a really nice stereo recording. You're gonna record both microphones at the same time so they both pick up a different image of the same recording. The mid microphone in my case sounds like this. And the side microphone. If you play back both of these together, they're still super thin. They're both uh, sounding very mono. and they just overlap and compete. So what we do is we create a copy of this side channel. I've just dragged it down below and I've sent it to a new place on the mixer, side and side copy. Then if we pan one of the side channels all the way to the left, 100%, then the other side channel, 100% to the right. Now if I press play, we won't have a stereo signal because we've copied the same thing on the left and right. It's still gonna sound mono. However, if I reverse the polarity on one of these side channels, so in this case the one on the right, now it's going to sound very wide and very spacious. The next optional step is to take both of these side channels and group them to a side group channel. This way you can easily adjust the volume of the left and right channel together. So if I mute the mid channel, you can hear the sides just on their own. Then if I turn the mid-channel on, we can blend the sides in with the whole recording. I'm going to turn the polarity reversal on and off so that you hear the difference between the mono and the stereo recording. So hopefully you can hear that this creates a very lush and spacious stereo image. And from here, I would of course be adding more EQ, reverb, compression and whatnots to those channels to get them fitting right in the mix. So it sounds good, but you're probably wondering why would you go to all this effort to get a stereo recording? Because quite frankly, recording a spaced pair of microphones on a guitar or a cello or whatever sounds absolutely gorgeous. Why would we go to all this effort? The reason is mono compatibility. If you play this mix back in mono, those two side channels completely disappear. They vanish off the face of the mix and you're only left with that mid channel. So you know in mono exactly what you're gonna get. And I'll explain why in just a moment. Whereas with a spaced pair, when you fold it into mono, you never really know exactly what you're gonna get. Sometimes it sounds great, it often does, but sometimes you have all these phase issues. And I am making a video about phase and polarity which will be published very soon. But let's just fold this mix into mono and you'll hear these two side channels disappear then I'll explain why they disappear. And just hearing the side channels on their own. Completely gone. To explain this, I'm gonna turn the polarity reversal off, undo the panning and zoom in 
on the waveform. If you look closely at this waveform, you'll see that they are perfect copies. When one wave goes up, the other goes up, etc. And if I superimpose the two by dragging it over the top, they look exactly the same. Now I'm going to double click here and just reverse the polarity from the audio sample. And what you see is it's now flipped entirely. So where one waveform goes down, the other goes up. And if I superimpose it, you'll see that they mirror perfectly along this line. Bear in mind, these haven't been panned left and right. So these completely, perfectly cancel each other out. Essentially, whenever the speaker is being told to push sound out, it's also being told to pull back in by the other waveform, and as a result, it just stands still in the middle. If I zoom back out again, now with no panning, if I simply reverse the polarity, they completely cancel each other out. You can see that there's a clearly signal on the mixer, but none of it reaches our headphones because they sum together in the master and they cancel each other out. If I turn the polarity reversal off, we can absolutely hear them. So the key to this trick is that you reverse the polarity, but you also pan them. When we pan them, we're taking advantage of the fact that the left and right speaker cones or headphones are separated physically, so we can actually hear them before they sum together and get a chance to cancel out. However, if the mix is played back in mono before it gets to the playback system, they completely disappear again. And of course, even when we add back in that mid-channel, the side channels still cancel each other out if the mix is folded into mono. It really is something very special. So I hope you add this to your recording toolbox. Remember, there's loads of good techniques. This one is not better or worse than another. And often when mixing, mono compatibility really isn't that important to everyone. It shouldn't be the, the gold standard most important thing. It's far more important to have, you know, good tonal balance, good dynamics and whatnots, and overall just a good song. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.